He was one of the, you know, shooting the whole time here. They were warming up in the early going. He's really eager. Said it was really weird, obviously, to be on the other locker room for this game. Keala King to the basket and in. Not effective attacking that little extended zone as they did the first time. Jones split it the first time. That time they threw a dangerous slow pass over the top. The defense was able to react. See, that pass is a dangerous pass. It makes the defense easily react. Somebody's got to be able to throw it between two defenders, or as Jones did on the first play, dribble between two defenders. Back-to-back -back turnovers now. And Ventrese throws it away, and that is up and in. And a bucket from Richardson, and Ricatino calling another timeout. He's called two here. It's a 7-0 run for Upike, and it's a 13-point game. This is a different team to Wesleyan. Physically, they, they're they much better matched than, than the last time. Well, and in fairness to Wesleyan, that team had only started practice October 15th. It was their first game. This team's had three actual games and an exhibition game. Nice pass by Bullet there, EJ. Right on the money. A good finish by Eric Richardson. The key to this defense, if you, you put a big guy at the top, Pikeville, with the idea to try and get Louisville to do doing, which is throw high, slow passes over the top of it. Sometimes you can steal it. If not, it makes it very easy for the defensive rotation. What you want to do is you want to be able to go between guys, either with a snap pass to that high post, or beat somebody off a dribble as they did. The first possession was perfect. Jones split the top two guys, threw it to Henderson. He went through to the corner, and they got a wide open look. The last two possessions, it's not what they wanted to do at all. Well, Ricketino was hot right there during well, that time. you out. make one mistake, okay, but to then do the exact same thing the second time. Now they've fallen back in the zone. They're disguising it a little bit. Still a zone, but they're not extending it. That tall, the, the height at the top, from over traditional 2-3. See how they attack this. Rush to the basket. Contact all over the place. Now he's being called differently this week. I don't think there's two ways about it. And that foul is going to be on Mango Mathiang, his first. That really wasn't a good possession either. It was just, yep. they went back. If you remember, they played that 2-3 early. Louisville threw it to the high post and then threw it opposite and got wide open looks. That time, anticipating the 1-3-1, they got kind of out of sync. Russ just dribbled and took an off-balance left-handed shot, and they got nothing out of it. Cantino, who played at Xavier last season with the miss. Let's see if they play for one or not. He's still coming back healthy. Cantino had a hand injury. This cast got off just about a week or so before the season. See back. There you go. Now they're thrown around it, not over it. That's how they had to, but now there should be an angle. Somebody should be open on the high post. You know, Matt Yang and Van Treese, where they are, is not got two guys doing the same thing, it looks like. Well, they were trying to run the shot clock down. Beautiful exit. Oh, that was perfect. That's why they kept throwing back and forth. They were trying to get it down to six. That's what they frequently do for a last possession, and Jones took it right at the buzzer. And look at this, gets the push right before the half. Second 20 minutes of play, getting ready to tip here at the final exhibition before the cards take the court for real on Saturday. 
against College of Charleston. UPAC, of course, already played three games this season. They were 26 and 7 a season ago. See, Rick Pitino sends out to start this half. Boy, he kept it in the locker room a long yeah. time. They came out with a minute 16 on the clock. I'm going to be eager to ask him about that after the game. Was he that upset about what was going on? What was he talking about? Well, he does have a different look out here. He's sub, let's see, he's got Blackshear, who was in foul trouble in that first half, is the only non-starter in there, and Anton Gill goes in in his place. They have so many options at the guard position, and then really when you get Kevin Ware back into the mix, and then it's not really a guard, but Luke Hancock give you some flexibility as well. Now I know the, you know the things that will always upset a coach, and Rick's no exception, rebounding and defense, and I, I can't imagine he was happy with the rebounding in the first half overall. That's and a that's check. a hand check. Look at Montrez, look at him though. I mean, he is like, I, I just can't get over the presence that he has. That's the best way to describe it. He just didn't strike. He looked like he'd be an energy guy, an aggressive player, an effective player. But, I mean, when they made him a captain, I was like, huh, okay. Now I see why, though. He's the, really yeah. embraced it. The verbal part of it has yeah. really come a long way. He's from a small town in North Carolina, Tarboro, oh, North Carolina. You're talking on the defense right there. Yeah. Called the switch out. Oh, nice move. Oh, by look AJ. at Justice. Oh, he just can't get it going, the poor guy. That was a terrific move. Three on one break here. Jones to the bucket. Boy, oh. Chris Jones. Boy, Rick, I'll tell you what, Russ is making some really nice passes on the break, though. That was another nice one. It's going to be that guard back in transition. you got Russ Smith in the ball, and you got Chris Jones on the other wing as the shot is missed by Reed. And another rebound. Fourth assist. Nice. Russ and then Man. midfield. Chris Smith getting his hand in there. Chris Jones on justice. Little oh, contact and puts it up and in, though. He has got... Give him 17 now on 8 of 12 shooting. And Chris Jones. That first half with 13 more quick ones here. Start half number two in a card. Lead it by 19. Chris Jones with four quick points to start this half. I got Kelly Wells to call a timeout. And the Cards League just won by 19. Hey, Thursday at 11, parents driving drunk with their kids in the car. WHS 11 News with the revealing investigation that will make you angry. WHS 11 on your side, Thursday at 11. Chris Jones, 17 points in this one. Fouls of the story of the first exhibition. I'd say Chris Jones right now looking like a big part of the story here in exhibition number two. Well, he's been outstanding. He really has little presses and then falls back into his zone here. Whitaker. Thought about looking inside for a moment. Justice. Go, 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 
Good defense. Now well, Injustice has it rejected away. And here's Jones again. He's got two guys behind him and puts it up and in. He's got 19. He's got 10 of the last 13 points. And King trying to answer quickly. Can't do it. Here's Mathian getting down a rebound. Kill with an aggressive block out there. And now going to pull up for the shot quickly. Harold grabs it though. Brought it back down. Puts it up and in. And will go to the free throw line. Well, Rick has got to like the energy a lot more this half. That yeah. guy always gives you energy. Yeah, but everybody else is too. Gil Walton might have gotten away with a push on the rebound, but still, it was a great aggressive defensive rebound. Then he came down, even though he missed maybe a little bit quick on the trigger on the three, still Louisville playing so hard. And Harrell, as you mentioned, always bringing the energy to the offensive board. He gets a chance at a three-point play. You know, interesting comparison I thought Kevin Keats made of him. He compared him to Tyler Hansbro. Yeah, I heard that NBA. at Monday's press conference. What do, you, what do you think of that comparison? I understand how he means it. He's not afraid of contact, and the motor just keeps running. So I, I, I can understand why. And as he pointed out, I mean, Hansbro's playing in the NBA and playing effectively, so he meant it as a compliment. Look at that, look at that. Oh, that was a great trap, and they let him get out of it. Left underneath the shot up, no good from Reed, and put back is up and good from King. He's got 11. Yeah, they did a really nice job in that trap, and then you just can't let the dribbler spin out of the double team. It's like turning the corner in football. Once he gets the edge, you got problems. Yeah, there's Smith. Nice left-handed pass to Matthew. Russ Smith's passing tonight has been on display. Well, that was a really nice job off the high ball screen, and then the left-handed pass. He's got five assists in this game. Take a look at that. He catches the two defenders kind of in between. Take a look at the, I believe it's Reed on defense right there. See, he loses sight of the ball. And that's what a good guard will do. Russ threw it right off his ear. That's what you teach guards. If that guy is not seeing the basketball, you buzz it right by the corner of his head there, and it's going to be a layup for your teammate. Jones, another rebound. He's got six. Is that how Russ can impress the scouts, though, with the passing more than anything else? Well, I don't know about more than, but I think there's no question it's got to be a part of it. I mean, he's not going to go and get the ball at the NBA level like Louisville had him get it last year. I mean, you know, it, it was in his hands so much. I mean, you know, that's like LeBron James-esque to put it in a guy's hands that much. So if it's not, then you're looking at, well, what else can he do? Does he know how to play without the ball? Can he move without the ball? Can he pass? Will he urge it defensively? I mean, his passing tonight's been outstanding. Really you know, that, that's the old adage. You've got to make your teammates better. Right now he is. He's had one of five shooting night, but again, the five. Is he had the nice steal defensively. They tried to throw it in the post. He knocked it away there. You know, other things besides just volume scoring. Jones knocked that away. 10-2 run to open this half for Louisville. And Whitaker's shot won't go. There's Trez the rebound and bounces right he's back okay. up. Yep, I think everybody just sort of held the breath for a moment there. Bounce right back up. Man, oh man, he is filling the adage of guys going from their freshman to their sophomore year and making their most dramatic leap and improvement. I, I mean, I think that's what we're seeing out of him. C told me after the game that he wants to get up to 250. Says he's about 240 right now. To 235 the end of last season. I think he's pretty realistic. Doesn't think he can do that during the season the way they burn calories around here. But that's, you know, it's that's the kind of goal he has. He's got aggressive goals as, he, as you would imagine a guy that looks like that would. Matthew really wanted that ball inside. Instead it's Harrell in the high post and what 